even as you're enjoying the cool country music right here on the morning tide with Chris the co teacher had uh, hinted on having a second guest in this uh, segment uh, we're cruising all the way up until 11 and uh, I was a bit worried whether she was going to come or not but either way uh, you're expecting grace but you see when you see grace you'll see teacher Deborah so either way me I was comfortable either way whoever was going to pop in but I knew somebody was on the way and God answers my prayers I kept the faith I stayed focused and she's here good morning good morning Grace <laughs> <laughs> you kept the faith yes <laughs> faith of waiting <laughs> yes you have to everything in this world you have to have faith that's in right. everything that's right and i was focused and i hoped mm. that i would see you yeah irrespective right. of the few minutes that we've lost mm -hmm. thank god you're here yes how have you been i've been okay and i've just had you on, uh, on this platform <laughs> when i'm out there doing my other things mm -hmm. but i've never had the opportunity of hosting you yeah today okay. you do <laughs> this is how grammar's grammar feels Okay. How are you feeling? You should, you should be going for more <laughs> leaves. <laughs> Sorry, Bram. <laughs> it's a nice feeling. <laughs> it is a nice feeling. Yeah, I've been mm. okay. Mm -hmm. um, just too busy. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very busy. Very busy? Yeah. I'm but, happy um, I'm here when you're busy. God is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, growing. Growing? Yes. In the spirit. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're unified. <laughs> So we are talking about uh, imposter syndrome. Yeah, uh, we just wanted to recap a bit of what uh, Grace talked about last week. Last mm. week I was uh, I was in Kabarak, so I couldn't make it here. You went to Nakuru. Yes, I was in Nakuru. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I had my final exam. Okay. Yeah, last week, so I couldn't come on Wednesday, and I also understand it was a a holiday. Yeah, our, our yeah. brothers gave us something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are waiting for others. <laughs> we love holidays. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, I was at Kabarak and uh, so Grace did imposter. Uh, she introduced it and then um, last week on Saturday we had our first class of mm -hmm. imposter syndrome mm -hmm. where um, she basically defined what it is, gave some examples and uh, how it comes out and, and how shame shows up through imposter syndrome and basically it's when somebody feels inadequate uh, when somebody feels they don't deserve something mm -hmm. even when they qualify for it mm -hmm. and um, we also talked about some of the things that could cause imposter syndrome and mostly it's um, learned where you you grow up in a family uh, for, inst for instance, you are in an unhealthy family mm -hmm. and um, you you learn some behaviors, maybe to be too strict, too firm, and, and so in future you keep beating yourself so hard. You keep questioning whether you deserve a promotion, for example, in work. You keep questioning whether you deserve even a certain spouse, mm -hmm. whether you deserve certain children, and, and the list goes on and on and on. And this affects both uh, uh, people who are working stay at home moms and everyone because we are caught in between the the pressure that mm. we give ourselves through that imposter syndrome mm -hmm. yeah so kila mtu akona hii imposter syndrome ama ni watu tofauti tu um several people do have um some may have but they don't know that they do oh yeah Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes we have these classes because they help to create awareness. You could be going through something and then you, you just hear someone saying, oh, I also experienced life in this and this manner. And and then now you, you get an aha moment and you're like, yeah, I also I also have this, this challenge. So we're trying to build a community, a community of people who will get to know and understand themselves better and uh, stop living in shame. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Who suffers from all this? <laughs> uh, any gender. Mm. And uh, it could be um, people who have just started working, for example. Uh -huh. uh, people who are growing and... Um, mostly people who are above 18 years old um, start relieving and uh, showing some symptoms of imposter syndrome. For example, it can be as, as young as, as a person who is as young as um, 17, 18 years old or as old as can be. 
mm. even a hundred or whatever. So what happens, like this 18 year old, if she or he has joined campus, for example, mm. and uh, the parents expect her to have a certain standard. You see the way sometimes we say in our family we don't have failures. Mm. So now these students when they join campus, they mm. have a certain way of doing life. They fear failure. And some of them, maybe they come from a family where uh, I'm working with a certain girl right now who mm. has everything from home. And the family is a healthy family. And so she beats herself when she doesn't perform well. She's in, a, in second year. She beats herself so hard by saying, you know, uh, my parents have given me everything and I'm just letting them down by not doing well. Mm -hmm. You see, that's, that's a symptom of imposter syndrome where you don't accept the you. The, 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 you, you feel like you are supposed to be perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. And that is not possible with human beings. And some of them are retirees, others are in their 40s and whatever, and they struggle with these things. Okay. So it really doesn't choose the age. It just depends on the activity that the person is growing into and where the person is at that moment. Mm. Yes. When you talk about uh, retirees, mm -hmm. uh, when you've had uh, something to do with wasted years, mm -hmm. you feel like you would have done better. Better, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. And sometimes maybe you have children at that point, uh, they are adult children, mm. they, they, you expect them to be um, in certain fields and maybe they are alcoholics or, and then now you feel like you're a failure. Mm -hmm. You feel like um, you didn't you didn't give your very best, or sometimes you feel like maybe they are copying you because you also had some of those characteristics when you were a young adult, and so you beat yourself so hard. And um, it could also be opposite where you are so successful, mm -hmm. but you feel like you still didn't give your best to your children. Ah. Yes. So how do you overcome all this? So the first step is what we are doing, awareness. Mm -hmm. Understanding that um, this is what I'm going through and uh, this is how it is affecting me. When I project this on someone, when I, I get into this space, I react in this way instead of responding in this manner, then it's because of this that I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. So awareness. Knowing something helps you catch it before it grows into something bigger, you know. If you know that uh, every time you want to be perfect, you're trying to be perfect and to show the world that you have the it. And uh, sometimes we actually end up doing these self-affirmations that really don't make sense. Mm -hmm. you, you say, I am the best, I am whatever. And when you look around, actually, you're not the best. So knowing that... This is what I am dealing with is the first step to healing imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, what about these people when you get to these kind of families? Unaskiati. Mm Hapa, -hmm. your grade umetoa wapi? Are you grade aikuangi hapa? I know. And uh, in a few, I'll be talking about students because uh, I, 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 I have a free webinar that is coming up next week. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking about students and how they can deal with such things. Uh, but... Um, Again, if I am a caregiver mm. and I have an understanding of how I should deal with life or how I should cope with some things, then I will not project those things on my children. You mm. know, again, awareness comes in. You will not just throw statements. Actually, last night we had a conversation with Grace mm. for a long period of time until around midnight. Mm. And we are just talking about these statements that people see mm. that are out of ignorance. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. you just say something. You don't think about the impact of that thing. You don't think about uh, how the other person is going to feel and even the you, how it's going to affect you and how m if this person in case comes up and says, you know, you said this and... You, you, you do not think about how the reconciliation bit is going to be, you know. So some of these statements we throw, like this grade, we don't, we don't score such grades here. I don't give birth to stupid children like you. Mm. Um, if you are aware, again, you will be able to know how to cope with that and how to, to eliminate that. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. The issue of overpraising... Mm -hmm and then criticizing these children mm -hmm. 
where do we draw the line okay now uh, there is a time grace tried uh, grace said it here that um, when you are talking to your child for example and you're telling your child that you are the best daughter or you are the best child in the world mm -hmm. you are actually making this child feel like when they go out there they are always the ones to be on the top of everything mm. you are supposed to say you are the best child in my world Wow. So even when you are praising your child, mm -hmm. there is a limit. You don't make it look like um, it is beyond and above <laughs> the, the normal praise. Mm -hmm. Because there, right there, you are developing something in this child to think that there is nothing that can ever defeat them. And that is why I'm talking about these affirmations that don't make sense. When you tell somebody that I am the head and not the tail. So what happens when they are the tail? <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you are giving praise, you're supposed to like um, uh, try to make it personalized in that context and not make it look like in the whole world, this is the best person. Because when they come out of this world, they, mm -hmm. they, there's a quote I saw somewhere that mm -hmm. a, a, a man was telling her daughter that, you know, when you go out here, you will always find somebody who is more. And it is true. You wake up every day, you go out here and you look at people and yes, you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. But you look around and you see somebody who looks actually more beautiful. Mm -hmm. So when you are praising, then you know the extent. You don't make this person look like you. You don't. You make it realistic. Oh. And 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 when you are criticizing, also you avoid using certain words. These mm -hmm. words that really, they are words that can really impact the life of of a person. Mm -hmm. And and they live, they live in shame. They live beating themselves, and they live thinking. Like I would give an example of my. Mm. of my of my my dad my dad every time i would i would be the best in class and come back with results i am position one and my dad would ask um why didn't you get 450 marks because <laughs> at that time i have 402 or 405 mm. Mm. and he's like yes you are position one and you have 402 marks mm. why didn't you get 450 Mm. So that over criticizing makes you with time to start wanting thinking that you can always score everything mm -hmm. you know and and sometimes life doesn't give you that mm -hmm. sometimes you you give your very best but mm -hmm. you don't you give your best shot but you don't land where you expected to land okay yeah hold that thought because I have two questions for you okay. coming up in a short while okay. keep it right here on zero seven one two. Double two double three eight five. We're tuning to Radio One Mini eighty eight. Radio Wamini 88.3 FM. We're 
tuned to Radio Wamini 88.3 FM. We're tuned to Radio Wamini 88.3 FM. We're tuned to Radio Wamini 88.3 FM. We're tuned to Radio Wamini 88.3 FM. We're tuned to Radio Wamini 88.3 FM. Tune to Radio Wamini 88.3 FM. We're tuned to Radio Wamini 88.3 FM. Eleven o'clock. I played that song deliberately because there's a man somewhere who told the likes of Kina Deborah <laughs> that you're the only potato in my soup. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if uh, that is a kind of a we, where do we classify this syndrome? And you see now. There's an article that I read somewhere that it never goes away. Mm -hmm. There's a man who like just sugar coating things mm -hmm. and then you get overboard and then Nasema, you don't even praise me so when you get into your next relationship you feel like this guy is not appreciating you enough mm -hmm. eh, from where you came from unakuta oh jamal kuwa na kuchocha mbaya you yeah. feel like you're on planet earth no cloud nine yes so unakutana jamames good morning morning to you good morning my sweetheart how was your night anakush yeah, I so, saw somewhere a meme. Mm, Someone was saying that mm, these these men who call ladies mommy should live forever. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Um, that is what we call love love bombing. Love bombing. Where, yeah, you make someone feel like um like you are made to feel like you are the best the best spouse that can That's ever be. You are the best. Yes, but bad. yes, but you need to know ah. that um, you need to, to 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 really define what best is, ah. because what will happen when you go out there when when you have that um, thing of I am always the best and I should always be the best, ah. um, you you get into something we call competitive culture. Okay. So you are always trying to compare. I come today and I see you. I see you in a in this stripped shirt, and mm. then I'm like, hey, I also need to get the one that looks like this, but better, uh -huh. because I am always supposed to be better. the best. Uh. So you you get into a competitive life, and um, that is why people commit suicide because uh -huh. you will never be satisfied, you will never be content, you will always be looking for something more. And um, the other day, I I was somewhere, and um, I listened to a certain lady mention mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that sometimes when we when we listen to these affirmations when we listen to these things that uh, really fill our souls and make us feel happy even the reels you watch every time because mm. they'll give you suggestions yeah. and, and the videos you watch on YouTube it's because there's something in you that needs to be fed there's something that you need to fix oh. so if 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 that something is being the best in the world, you will always be looking for affirmations that say, I am the best in the world. Affirmations that say, 
nothing i conquer everything and then so wh- what happens when um, you don't conquer conquer mm. is the imposter syndrome thing you start feeling like you're a failure you cannot do anything mm. you, and then shame comes in okay yes all right hey okay now i know somebody's asking mm-hmm. i have a question mm-hmm. How can I get uh, how can I get a course online just a training like that because I have people to help out but I have more more ideas. <laughs> okay. Now, uh Grace and I have these classes like we had our first class last week on Saturday and mm. these classes are recorded. Mm. So if you did not manage to attend the class you can actually purchase the recording very affordable mm. price it's 750 shillings only. Mm. So you can get that class and listen through just to get more information mm. and then um like this month on the 27th we have our second class on imposter syndrome we'll just be growing and now getting more practical mm-hmm. in the in, in how this thing manifests in different uh, f- uh different people and 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 so you can you can pay beforehand you can um buy the previous classes we have had on mm-hmm. on imposter syndrome you mm-hmm. just have to uh send a message or to call the office number that is uh 0797404 Uh, 4904 mm-hmm. 0797 490404 and I'll uh, I'll give you direction somebody will be waiting on the other end of the line to just talk to you and get to help you know how you can uh get more information about our classes mm-hmm. yes you're telling me something that you have something lined up yeah i have a free webinar for high school students uh for those people who don't know i am a high school teacher by training ah yes and i have taught for 10 years wait, wait. yes <laughs> I've taught for 10 years mm. yeah and um uh, in in the course of teaching I did a lot of work with students uh, I I normally joke about this that in every school I went to I was a guiding guiding and counseling teacher and I also served as the Christian Union patron mm. and and sometimes it's a, it's it's like a fun fact but um it's because I was called to be more than just a teacher mm-hmm. and and of course I have had students journeyed with them in different areas and currently I'm in transition into something called chaplaincy and I am purely into chaplaincy in learning institutions mm-hmm. so currently I'm working at Park University with university students mm-hmm. and staff there and so um I I want to to have a free webinar with high schoolers next week on Thursday mm-hmm. just to to talk to them about self care in high school mm. you you and i know how high school can be and how hard it can get Absolutely. and um how sometimes students the other day i was saying students come to school is a people not just as learners they come to school is people who have come from communities and they have been impacted with different things mm. and different life issues you know and so when they are coming to school yes they are coming to learn they are coming to follow the curriculum and do the kcse or whatever exams uh-huh. but then they also have other issues that need to be fixed and so i'll be talking to students and helping them understand how does self care look like for a student when you go to school you make a mistake and of course you know uh, after making a mistake in high school what follows is punishment mm-hmm. and different schools give different forms of punishment um there are some teachers who will tell you when it's time for my lesson do what get out mm. so i don't want to see you near me there is a teacher who will project their anger on you and um when you have um said something they always use that statement against you and so instead of uh growing a grudge with that teacher mm-hmm. and uh, having to fight so hard not to have that teacher in in your presence because they will always be your teacher mm-hmm. until you finish your exam so sure. how are you uh, how how are you going to take care of that mm-hmm. when you have not gotten justice as a student mm-hmm. for example you uh you you were involved in in some in a uh, discipline case mm-hmm. maybe with uh, uh another student or with a teacher because mm-hmm. it happens nowadays students being involved in discipline cases with teachers maybe with drugs mm-hmm. maybe with sexual relations mm-hmm. maybe with just relationships and mm-hmm. all that so and 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 the case falls on you Mm-hmm. So it 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 turns out like you you are the problem when 
probably you are the victim. So how do you deal? Because maybe you are told now you'll go home for two weeks or whatever. And so how do you take care of yourself in such things? When, when you have this parent who is always pushing you to score certain grades, mm -hmm. you are told you're supposed to come with an A. You are trying and the chemistry is not chemistry in mm, class. So you can't get enough. that A. Mm. How do you take care of yourself so that you don't end up working so hard? You, you have seen students who go to class at 3 a.m. and they go to sleep by midnight or even 1 a.m. Mm. Because they are trying so hard to get the A that the parents told them. Mm -hmm. So I'll be talking about these things. When the teacher suggests something and you feel... That thing is not um, is not really adding up, or it's not helping you, or it's demeaning you, or devaluing you, or all that, th all those things. Mm -hmm. How do you take care of that? And when you're coming from a family, for example, where there is a lot of need, it could be emotional needs, mm -hmm. physical needs, mm -hmm. psychological, just things that you need somebody to be more than just a teacher to you, mm -hmm. and the more than just a teacher is not happening how do you navigate through that mm -hmm. so i really want to help high schoolers uh, i really want to work with them for two hours just listening to them and trying to to help them with facts on how to deal with some of these things i don't know if you can relate with these things that i'm mentioning uh, when you're talking about high school students mm -hmm. uh, gender both both oh. male and female. Are their challenges the same? Um, not really. Mm. Um, uh, it could be yes sometimes and no. Mm -hmm. um, girls have more emotional needs oh. than boys. Okay. You know, m most boys are just rough and, you know, they have grown up knowing you should not be weak. You should know. So they bully each other. Mm. They, they, they are just like that. And then girls come here and, and they want the warrior, especially when the hormones start uh, doing their thing. Mm. And the, the girls just want a lot of attention. They want uh, a lot of presence, a mm. lot of love, mm -hmm. you know. Imposter and syndrome. <laughs> 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 no, that's not imposter syndrome. <laughs> So, <laughs> what happens mm. with, uh, with, with the girls if they don't get these emotional needs mm. and they, they start developing some coping mechanisms that sometimes are not good. And for the boys, the, some of them deal with drug issues, although there are girls who also have the drug thing, but uh, most boys struggle with, with that. And they struggle with... Um, issues uh, from family and uh, performance and all these and yeah the, the needs some are the same and others are actually different based on the gender mm -hmm. and also based on the where the school is like boys in Nairobi mm -hmm. have some issues that could be different with the boys in a certain remote village somewhere mm -hmm. because because of also exposure yeah, you know sure. um the, the way a boy here in nairobi has has access to some things mm. um the, the the boy in the village doesn't have so they could have but both of them have issues let me tell you adolescence comes with many challenges there is a way hormones make people behave and especially when they are growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if there is nobody to actually be more than a teacher to these students or a third voice that is telling them, yes, these hormones are making you behave like this and this, that is why you have students just burning down property in school, students just... Uh, calling other people names, labeling teachers, nicknaming them, and mm. sometimes we actually end up labeling them as rude when they're just trying to cope. So if there's nobody to actually be a voice and tell them this is how you should do life, this is how you should navigate through these emotions and all that, and if we also don't have um, a, a teacher who is... Um, aware of how the, the the hormones play out in the life of the student then we lose we lose both of them we lose the teacher we lose the student so now i want to help the student mm. because you will not always have a teacher who is self-aware mm -hmm. you will not always there's always a mad person in every market 
ah. you will not always get the teacher that you expect you know there is what we call the ideal world and what we call the real world uh -huh. so the ideal world is i expect that my teacher will always affirm me my teacher will always give me gifts my teacher will always praise me my teacher will always call me out when i make a mistake because that is also part of our, the responsibility of a teacher so when you get a passive teacher or when you get a very strict teacher what mm. happens to you so if you did not have the reality that happens qua ground mm. then we lose you as a student and so i want to help them know how they can actually build themselves so that if these things are not offered in school they know how to navigate through high school life okay yes don't you think there's a lot of confusion when it comes to uh, the current trends of upbringing mm -hmm. of children the yes. advent of internet mm -hmm. I love confusion at home. Sijui kienda wapi. Kila mtu anajaribu kuweka vitu ndani yako. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. Um but let me say this that a uh, high school student, somebody who is 13 to around whatever age because nowadays high schoolers have whatever age. So this person can actually comprehend things and they can discern they they know what is wrong and what is right mm -hmm. it's just that they make deliberate choices mm -hmm. to choose what they want to dwell on or what they want to do mm. it's not that these people are stupid high schoolers are not stupid especially with the internet and all this mm -hmm. this these students actually know more than some of us teachers know they are exposed to more things so yes there is confusion mm -hmm. but with proper guidance students can actually make the right choices okay. the problem is sometimes mm. we ourselves take what pre preach water and take wine mm -hmm. so they get confused because they say that we have just been having a discussion with with a group of people where uh, some young girl has tattooed the name of a boy i don't know whether you've seen that I video yeah yesterday. tattooed the the, the name of a, a, a boy here and uh, on the forehead and she's showing it and today i saw a video uh, the boy giving her yogurt and flowers mm. and so she says that's the reason why she did the tattoo you know so yes this information comes out and it's confusing for high schoolers but with the right guidance and it can just be one person one person saying calling it out and saying you know this is not right only that mm -hmm. can help mm -hmm. and that is why i'm giving this free webinar just let your student come and just listen mm -hmm. even if they will not follow mm -hmm. let them just listen there is power in just knowing the truth someone said the truth sets you free <laughs> so there, there's just power in listening to that one right voice mm -hmm. that one right voice mm -hmm. yes all right mm -hmm. all right Anasemanini. thanks for the answer now i have a young I have uh, I have you uh, growing goja 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 nipate but when I touch the point of looking for him anasema akona a young one mm -hmm. akimtafutia kazi mm -hmm. uh, ni kama wana chagua kazi sana and then mm -hmm. they are so mo much concerned about the pay Mm. what is wrong with this generation mm. Mm. yeah okay. uh, we and do we find them at they are a bit lazy no uh. same okay. <laughs> same okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me say this I, I will not outrightly say that they are lazy because i know the gen z who are very hard working and who are out here really um doing their best mm. but yes a few are lazy and even when you look back in the other generations so there are people who are lazy someone was telling me it when 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 i look at people here in nairobi with land and everything i wonder what my grandfather was doing he was and people were <laughs> yeah, he was dancing and people <laughs> were grabbing land so laziness is there in every generation we cannot just label the gen z and say that they are the ones who are lazy it's everywhere but i will talk about this idea of choosing choosing the pay choosing the job mm. um this person may 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 be also suffering from something that is um probably from upbringing mm -hmm. so they they are trapped in um the comparative thing 
you need to find out you need to really dig deep and 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 realize why they are choosing because maybe the the young person is co is is conditioned to know that several jobs are the best paying you know like when i was growing up i actually wanted to do something in communication mm. but my mom said no you're going to be a teacher mm. and she was right then to tell me that she she wanted me to be a teacher because then teachers who are respected in the society Absolutely. a teacher would pass with their bicycle and mm. everyone is mwalimu mwalimu yeah. and when they go somewhere they record that is not the the, the thing that happens today mm. you know mm. and so uh, probably now those times our parents would say you have to take this occupation or this career because it will help you but today today uh, what matters is basically the skills that you can now, nowadays it's not even the papers or mm. the nini mm. it's 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 the it's the, the 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 skills what extra can you give apart from just being a classroom teacher holding the chalk and producing the a mm. what else what else can you give so we need to train our young people to know that um there is no best career huh yes there's ah. no best career okay. it actually depends with what you can offer as a person uh -huh. and this now comes uh, up with uh, something we call career guidance especially for high schoolers when they are choosing careers mm. we don't push them into careers that we think are best careers in the market we look at what they can do what their skills what what they are capable of doing because you will kill a student trying to make them a pilot by making them memorize physics and mm. later now we get the people you are calling lazy because you give them a task and they cannot produce yet they had an A and good papers mm. so that young person just needs guidance they need direction and they need somebody who will do it in um in in a loving manner with with empathy and compassion not mm. to scold them and not to make them feel like they are failures just to make them understand that yes you des you desire this but i feel this is what you can do and make them understand okay. if not support them now atu kufinya computer pia unataka tu support yeah why not like you see now mm -hmm. where i come from mm -hmm. this idea of working online has never been inculcated in us okay we have to wake up go somewhere mm -hmm. or maybe do manual jobs mm -hmm. But you find that this is a an entire generation coming on board mm -hmm. telling you that you don't have to go out there mm -hmm. to make money. And then when you start asking for accountability, mm -hmm. you start ruffling feathers. Now, mm -hmm. um I know of people who have worked online and been successful mm -hmm. and I also know of people who tried working online and it didn't materialize. Yes. It it needs a lot of self-discipline. Mm -hmm. But I would say this, we cannot outrightly say that don't work online you have to wake up and go to work because mm -hmm. life changed with covid yeah you know yeah. and and covid brought this thing of working from home and people are working from home and things are actually working out and people are being productive so it just needs a lot of discipline if for example a person says they are doing work online are they disciplined enough mm -hmm. not to like for example you wake up in the morning and it is raining cats and dogs do you continue sleeping or you sit up and work you can imagine that means discipline mm. yeah waking up yeah and and, and and all these things grow um, uh, grow in us as we just experience life and that is why i'm passionate about high schoolers mm -hmm. and the way they are learning things the way they are they are seeing life their perspective of life you know if if we don't really make them understand the reality on the ground we are just going to lose them we'll we'll end up with those lazy people you are talking about somebody told me there's a gap mm -hmm. of generations yes. i think there's a generation one of them most likely mm -hmm. is going to be extinct <laughs> not so <laughs> sure about the because, fact uh -huh. because they don't listen ah. do you conquer um una ni show nini wewe where yeah. were we yeah. when gen x yeah. that's how they refer to people yeah i have had i have uh, i have had people my age calling uh, ladies who are in their 50s older women where? and and they keep telling them you are older ladies and you can't tell us anything you don't get this and i want to say that it is true some things they don't get uh -huh. but other things yes we need to listen mm. yes okay. you don't you don't need to experience pain 
you can actually learn from someone who already experienced the pain. <laughs> La- learn the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you don't have to go through it. You can... You know, the experience is the best teacher. Mm. It is true, but sometimes it's not the best teacher. You can actually learn from people who have tried and failed. And, what if you're talking so to you people don't, that don't listen? What do you do? Um, there's, there's just so much you can do. Uh, you... Uh, there is a saying in my village that mm-hmm. you can take um, a donkey to the river, mm. but you cannot force it to drink. Let it. You do. You do the right thing, uh-huh. and um, let them choose. Because again, you don't want to be a moral police, and you don't want to make people feel like they are not because they are adults sometimes, mm. and and they have their own opinions and the way they see life and all the, the perspectives. So you tell them the truth and the right thing to do and let them make a choice. You know, even in the Bible, <laughs> uh, we are told that I give you today, choose between life and death. You can choose either, but then you are told choose life that you may live. So the choice is always on the other person, mm. but you can influence how they, you just don't push them into it. You can don't just push. influence, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I wish we could continue with this conversation. Yeah, so uh, I just want to invite the high schoolers. If you're a teacher and you just want to listen to um, the information, uh, you just want to, to to get to know how you can support high schoolers, uh-huh. you're free to join uh, our webinar on uh, on Thursday. If you're a student and you just want to learn how you can take care of yourself as a student, mm-hmm. then please join our webinar on um, on 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 thursday next week so what i will do uh, you can follow my page deborah joy juma on facebook there is information about that or you can also uh whatsapp me on zero seven nine seven four nine zero four zero four and uh i'll give you more information about how to join the webinar it's free of charge Parting short, yako ni gani? Utumi salam. Parting short mm. is that um, the brain, we mm. always talk about neuroplasticity. Mm-hmm. The brain has the ability to learn new things, to stretch, and to accommodate other ideas and other perspectives. It's not static. It's dynamic. Feel, uh, give yourself the freedom and the openness mm-hmm. to learn other things to 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 allow yourself to grow you are struggling with imposter syndrome because mm. you you really have not allowed information that you hear out here to transform you so join the classes join the webinars and allow the information to transform you your brain can learn and accommodate new things okay yes what a perfect way to end this conversation Hope to see you next week. God willing. Yes. Mm. Oh, yuko kabarak. No, I'll be around. Right. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You're and, welcome. Uh, it was a pleasure. No. no. I'll tell Bram. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, teacher Libora, uh, to turn around next week. Asante. Stand for the news coming up in a short while. That has been our time in, the, in as far as that conversation is concerned. Uh, this is the Catholic Radio for All. FM, home of carefully selected.